All of the travelers that were purchased for the project uh, were all helicopter travelers, uh, which have a helicopter arm sticking off the side, which means you're, you're allowed to fly a line past them, and actually the pilot can put the line directly into the, to the traveler. Uh, and this was the technique that was, was used. Utilizing a Bell 212 helicopter, we carried a concrete weight below the helicopter, and to that weight was attached a choker, which was then directly attached onto our main pulling line. And it was literally the helicopter pilot who threaded that pulling line out through all of the travelers. This continued on through to the tensioner site, and then mechanically through the gas-driven puller, the conductor was then pulled back through the same travelers back to the puller site, completing the pull. There's a very unique uh, problem that exists with the flying of the sock line by a helicopter, and that is going through the center phase of the tower. Uh, this was addressed very, very simply uh, as you see on the ongoing shots and uh, was addressed by flying the, uh, the pulling line to the bridge of the tower, temporarily anchoring it off with a, about a 50-foot choker line in front of it then feeding that choker line after it had been disconnected from the main pulling, pulling line, feeding that through the traveler. The helicopter would then hover back into to the bridge be reattached on the other side, and then carry on with the flight. The project continued on to completion, with everything fitting together like clockwork. The high degree of attention to planning and detail paid off in the end, for the power line was completed on time and under budget. The crew, a veritable United Nations with New Guineans, Australians, New Zealanders, Norwegians, Canadians, and even the Americans and Russians, all pulled together to make the job a success and Ian Hayward International proved to be up to the challenge of managing the whole affair. The um, project was, uh, was scheduled for completion uh, in June of uh, 91, and we beat the scheduled date of completion by some two or three weeks, and uh, we were under it, in other words, and we were also under the budget for uh, the erection and stringing of the line. Two years to do a project from from conception through to completion is uh, is an awesome job in, in North America, let alone in Papua New Guinea. Uh, could we have improved on the schedule? I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, many people bent over backwards to get this job done in the shorter period of time that it was done in. Uh, could things have run a little smoother? Possibly. But that's always the case with a project anyway. As far as future work is concerned, uh, we would certainly like to get involved in another project of this nature uh, under circumstances similar to those that we faced in uh, New Guinea. That is to say, tough, rough, inaccessible terrain. And I think we could excel again in this particular field. Ian Hayward International is a very uh, small, unique company, uh, very highly diversified within the transmission industry that is totally capable of designing and installing transmission lines at very short notice anywhere in the world. Uh, helicopter construction is only one of those aspects. As far as conventional transmission work, which can be done by a multiplicity of other companies, well, we're in there doing that too. And I'm talking about conventional, conventionally built towers from the ground up, step by step, uh, being handled in a characteristic way when you have access to all the way along the route and there are no problems of the type that we encountered in New Guinea. Yes, we're in there and we're, we'll be chasing those as well. And I, I hope we'll have our element of success in those, in, in those fields too, because they're easier.